All right, so welcome again, Captain, XO, HODs, Departmental CPOs, and uh, our, of course, you, our audience, our crew. Uh, we appreciate your attendance today. Again, um, just a few minutes, because uh, we'd like to recognize um, African Her Heritage Month. And uh, we're going to have some guest speakers. Um, and uh, they're going to just talk for a few minutes about why we observe this and why it's important. Um, and then uh, we'll see. Uh, it, We'll have a, a poem read by Petty Officer Williams. Yes. And then we will have the cake cutting ceremony because I know everybody's eyeballing that cake. So, um, Captain, would you like to start out by saying anything? Okay. All right. So, we'll get right into our guest speaker. So, uh, AR Dento. Dento is up first. that you were able to come out and celebrate this with us. I am Tony Bowden. I'm the senior dental officer here on the Nimitz, in case you didn't know that. Um, I just want to talk to you briefly today about Black History Month. I'm sure a lot of you are sitting here and you're wondering, why are we here? What's the purpose of Black History Month? How did it come about? It actually started back in 1926 by a Dr. Carter Woodson, and it started off as just one week, actually, one week. And it was called Negro History Week. And it was during the second week of February because he wanted it to coincide with the birthdays of President Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass, who were two icons uh, in that time period who were instrumental in um, black history and uh, the achievements of African Americans at that time. And so it was just that one week, and 50 years later, it evolved and became a whole month. Uh, about 1976, it became the whole month of February for Black History Month. So the main purpose of it, though, is so that we can highlight and talk about the accomplishments that black Americans have contributed to this country. We've done more than just we're slaves and pick cotton. We did a whole lot more than that. There were a lot of uh, achievements, a lot of contributions that have been put forward. And so the purpose of this is so that um, it can be acknowledged. Because a lot of this is not placed in the, in the history books. A lot of this stuff is not there. It's not for us to find. So we have to have this time so we can, can highlight on that. The important thing to know uh, is knowing your uh, diversity. This is the main important thing. And by knowing where you are going, you have to know where you've come from. You have to know what was in place, what the sacrifices were made for there. And I just want to tell you briefly, uh, just to give you an example, for females. Females uh, were not allowed in the military until 1908, okay? Black females didn't come in until 1944. But even then, the females that were in was only for the nurse corps, and it was only for what they call yeomanettes. It was in the admin, okay? But I look across now, we have females in reactor, we have them in engineering, navigation, IT, uh, maintenance, you guys are all over. And you can see how the history has evolved, how um, these barriers have been broken down so that we can continue to succeed. So I stand before you today, uh, many people have gone ahead of me to uh, break barriers so that I can stand before you today and I hope that I can continue this uh, for young sailors who may be coming behind me, that I can continue that and make history and make it his, uh, easier for the next person after. Thank you so much. Uh, the next key no speaker will be coming up, uh, Floyd from uh, Reactor. Again, uh, good morning, everyone. I hope you all can hear me. Uh, before I actually begin my speech, I'd like to recognize this group behind me. Uh, as so often happens with uh, ceremonies like this, uh, the people that are instrumental in actually making it happen get overlooked. So I want to, if you would, please join me in uh, congratulating this hardworking group of young men and women that worked selflessly to put this uh, event together, but that also worked to put together other multicultural events like uh, for Women's History, uh, for Asian American Month, and for other uh, specific uh, nationalities and uh, groups, they put together a similar ceremony. So please uh, join me in, in thanking them. And again, I want to welcome you, Captain uh, XO, CMC. I want to again thank you uh, for making the time in our very busy schedules 
to honor uh, African Americans that have served our nation's defense. So, uh, if, uh, if you'll see on your tables in front of uh, many of you that are seated, uh, put, we put together, Commander Bowden and I put together a, a two-page handout, uh, front and back. It's actually one page front and back. Um, it starts with, uh, again, a brief uh, synopsis of how uh, African American history came to be what it is today. And um, also listed our, uh, what I think are uh, not comprehensive, but a fairly good start of uh, books and films that I would recommend that you take a look at if you're interested in knowing more about African Americans that have contributed to our nation's defense. Um, one of the books that I'm very fond of that I read a number of years ago is a book called The uh, Fighting 761st. It's the story of the all-black tank battalion uh, that fought during World War II as part of General Patton's Third Army. Uh, these very brave uh, men um, fought along, and uh, they were part of the historic push from the D-Day invasion at the beaches of Normandy all the way to uh, Berlin. Uh, they fought in Sherman tanks, which were, if you know anything about uh, World War II history, were significantly uh, inferior to the German panzers. Uh, but they were able to, because of their bravery and their tactics and their training, they were over to, uh, able to overcome and win uh, s several battles in the push from uh, Normandy to Berlin. So uh, please take a look at that list. And then on the back page, if you'll flip it over, uh, you'll see a list of, I put together uh, 10 individuals that I think you should know a little bit about. Uh, most of them are served in the Navy, um, highlighted by uh, um, Admiral uh, J. Paul Reasons, who was one of the first African Americans to uh, reach the rank of four-star admiral, uh, but also a gentleman that uh, I actually had the distinct honor and privilege of meeting uh, when I was a fourth-class midshipman many, 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 many years ago. Um, uh, Colin Powell. General Powell, at the time, he was still the, uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Uh, he came to my university uh, back in 1990, and I had the opportunity to meet him in a, as an honor that I will cherish uh, for the rest of my life. And then finally, I have listed a few interesting facts. I think you'll find them interesting facts about myself. So please take a look at that. Uh, obviously, we don't have time, near, nearly the time, uh, to cover the entire spectrum of uh, of contributions made by African American members, but again, I think if you'll take a look at that, it's a good starter. So with that, I'll go ahead and get started. So I have a prop. It's a dollar bill, and uh, I'm, I don't remember who, I, who this belongs to, but yeah, yeah. So if, if you don't remind me, this is going in my pocket. Yeah. All righty. So if you look, the reason I have the dollar bill um, on the very back. For those of you that are familiar, if you're facing the, looking at the dollar bill on the, the left-hand side, uh, it has the eagle, and uh, in its beak is a banner. And in the banner, there's uh, three famous words in Latin. Does anyone off the top of your head know what those three words are? Corpus de Fortis? Corpus de Fortis. Yeah, Edmundo said it. Edmundo said it. E pluribus unum. E pluribus unum. Those words literally mean out of many, one. Out of many, one. This year's theme uh, for African American History Month is bringing together the crossroads of the Emancipation Proclamation and Martin Luther King's uh, march on uh, the Lincoln Memorial. This year's theme ties together these two iconic figures. They dedicated their entire lives to the noble proposition of E Pluribus Unum yet even to the extent that they were willing to lay down their lives for that very cause. Abraham Lincoln, our nation's 16th president, one of his famous quotes he stated, and I quote, a house divided against itself cannot stand. I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. I do not expect the union to be dissolved. I do not expect the house to fall, but I do expect it will cease to be divided. It will become one thing or all the other. Fast forward uh, 100 years uh, future, into the future, and Martin Luther King was quoted as saying, whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. This is the interrelated structure of our reality. Fast forward today, 2013, on the mess decks of the USS Nimitz. You should ask your, each ask yourselves the following question. How can I contribute to building camaraderie, unit cohesion, and e pluribus unum? And to that end, I offer you the following examples. Where am I, uh, where am I culinary specialist? Who works in food preparation? Okay, 
Excellent. Awesome. Woohoo! For you, I offer the example set by Dory Miller. Dory Miller was a, back in World War II, you weren't referred to as culinary specialists. You were, you were called mess attendants or, or, or cooks. Dory Miller was uh, served on board the U.S. Arizona on that fateful day in 1941, December 7th, when uh, Pearl Harbor came under attack. Um, he was uh, putting together laundry below the mess decks, I'm sorry, below decks, on board the Ari Arizona. Uh, when the bombs fell, he rushed to one of the anti-aircraft guns and was actually credited with shooting down one of the Japanese fighters. He was also cited with uh, rendering aid to his commanding officer, who unfortunately was mortally wounded during the uh, attack. For his efforts, Dory Miller received the Navy Cross. Okay, where are my air crewmen? Where are my, uh, where are my uh, gripes? Where are my uh, Skittles, I believe we call them still? That's not offensive, is it, Captain? Okay, grapes, okay, excellent, excellent, my air crewmen. Uh, for you, I offer the following example of the historic, or he heroic, efforts of the Tuskegee Airmen, fighting 332nd, led by then General Benjamin O. Davis, our nation's first African-American to reach the rank of uh, general in the United States Air Force. Uh, these men were memorialized recently in the film uh, Red, Red, uh, Red Tails, thank you, Red Tails, which filmed, uh, aired in 2010. Uh, and they were famous for, uh, they, they did not lose a single bomber during all of their escort runs over Germany during World War II. Yep. Engineers, where are my engineers? Show me some hands, come on guys, show some pride. All right, thank you, R.O., thank you, sir. All right, for engineers, I'll offer you the following example of the Fighting 761st, uh, the All Black Tank Battalion, which I spoke of earlier. Uh, they, were, they served under General Patton, 3rd Army, during the historic push from Normandy to Berlin. Uh, several members, including their, one of their first lieutenants by the name of Vernon Baker, received the Medal of Honor. Um, unfortunately, it was some 50 years after the end of World War II, they were awarded the Medal, of, he was awarded the Medal of Honor in 1997 by then President Clinton. Seven members from the 761st received the Medal of Honor for their service. Not done yet. Cannot forget my supply core. Where are my supply guys at? Yes, yeah, Suppo in the house. <laughs> Suppo. You guys are offered the example of the Red Ball Express. Uh, not well known, but they were instrumental uh, during World War II. It was a predominantly, pre predominantly African-American outfit of Army quartermasters. Um, they engineered what was uh, considered to be the most, uh, for the first time in our, that we could ever, that we could recall, one of the most um, well-organized and uh, massive uh, supply lines that literally allowed uh, the Third Army to make an historic lightning push from the beaches of Normandy to Berlin because of the supply chain that they set up. Um, they were able to bring ammunition, fuel, and food to the front lines at a record pace. And uh, this was something that had never been done before in our nation's history. So go, way to go, supply. Okay, where are my gunners maids, ordnance men, weapons? Where you guys at? Show me some love. Awesome. Excellent. Okay, for you, I'll offer two examples. First example was the uh, highly decorated and distinguished 452nd Anti-Aircraft Artillery Battalion that served during World War II. And perhaps more notably, and uh, well-recognized, were the uh, 54th Regiment of the Massachusetts Volunteers. Uh, these men were made famous during the, war, the, the movie Glory, which featured Denzel Washington, Morgan Freeman, and Matthew Broderick. Uh, they were famous for their uh, uh, assault on Fort Wagner, South Carolina, during the Civil War. Uh, and uh, as a side note, throughout the Civil War, there were actually 16 African Americans that received the Medal of Honor. In conclusion, I ask you each to remember four things. One, you matter. Every individual in this room and this organization matters. Second, make every day count. Remember the phrase carpe diem. It literally means to seize the day. Don't let one day go by without making some conscious effort to better yourself and to better those around you. Thirdly, take advantage of the opportunities given to you to improve. 
whether it's completing your ESWAS or your EAWS qual that you've been working on and promising yourself that you're going to finish for the last 12 months, or if you decided to get out, taking advantage of that GI Bill to complete that degree that you promised your mom or your dad that you would complete when you quit college to join the Navy, or working hard so that when the advancement exams roll around next month, you put yourselves in a position to advance, or if you promise yourself when you join the Navy, I want to become an officer, and you've been sitting on that State 21 package for the last several months because you're afraid to fill it out and submit it. Promise yourself you'll take advantage of the opportunities. And finally, know your shipmates. Take the time to get to know one another. Uh, I'll leave you with uh, one of my favorite scenes from the movie, Remember the Titans. I know, I know it's one of the Arl's favorites because we've talked about this before. Uh, in the scene, uh, Denzel Washington, they're at their training camp before the football season starts, and he just can't seem to get the guys all on the same page because they're still hung up on, well, he's white and he's black or he's this and he's that. They can't get past that. So finally, Denzel gets so frustrated, he tells them, okay, we're going to have four days until each one of you can get with someone of a different race and learn something important about that person. What, you know, what his father does, or where he went to school, or what he likes to read, or what his favorite food is, or what his favorite song is. I challenge each of you today to learn something detailed and important about one of your shipmates of a different race, a different nationality, or different ethnicity, or from a different part of the country. Together, we will be closer to making ourselves one crew out of many. E pluribus unum. Thank you. one grace. A Navy day begins with reveille followed by a normal routine. But on December 27th, blame my ass, December 7th, 1941, this day started off with screams. At 6 a.m. on the West Virginia, you could hear the munitions explode. On board was a cook named Doris Miller, whose courage will come to know. While many were in panic, Miller quickly reported to his GQ station where he carried the wounded, including the captain, reacting without hesitation. Still following his orders, subsequently he manned the anti-aircraft gun. And at the top of his lungs, he proudly shouted, I think I just got that one. For 15 minutes, with no formal training, he fired until he could no more. This time was tragic, very heroic, and some bore the first eyewitness. Then the order was given to abandon ship. The West Virginia was on the harbor floor. Later, Miller was awarded the Navy Cross by Admiral Nimitz. He remarked that Miller was the first of his kind to receive such high tribute. And there will be no more to follow his brave acts while keeping Doris Miller's repute. This is one man's honor, courage, and commitment defined in great glory. This is more than just a poem, more than a story. This is our shipmate, Dory. 